Oh. <laughs> I guess you have to uh, torment yourself through a session with uh, me as a teacher again, or trying to be a teacher at least. But I've drawn up a situation here where I have, uh, the, as I have on the table there, with the, with the head casting here. Uh, this is the granite, the table, precision table. So I can put the, the what I call the saddle piece here down on top of that. This is scraped flat by the owner, and then you have a, uh, and then uh, to the dovetail, which I will also prove inside here because it sits now, of course, like this, and you have a dovetail in here. Anyway. Uh, the head now uh, has then these uh, two flats here mating on the swivel plate so you can swivel this around there is no pin here that locates it so the actual position this way can well is of no great significance then to the precision here but of course this way it has uh, meaning that you have to line this uh, spindle to the table which should be representing the column here then, if you put it that way. And uh, to do that, I have extended the, the spindle out. It's then free floating, you can see, or is guided by the, by the precision bore here. And I have it um, mounted and measured here, and then compare it with what I measure here. I find that they are a little bit uh, unequal, We've established that uh, uh, the swing plate here, uh, both on the saddle piece and the head, is a little bit off, but not really that much. And then I will try to figure out uh, the alignment between the spindle and the plate then here. So in that direction, it's not so critical because there is no, as far as I can see, no... Uh, pin that aligns this specifically so you can tilt it either way really but of course in this direction now which uh, is uh, in the direction of the spindle uh, you have to align it so um, one check then will be to find out uh, just running across like this finding the highest point Like that, then going down here and finding the same height here. But as you can see, it's not touching, it's not, it's about how much is it? Uh, seven hundredths of a millimeter off. But then this is of course at the uh, almost at the uh, at least quite far out. If I push upwards, this is the amount of slop you have. So, um, um, ideally, uh, we will rectify this by adding a sleeve here uh, that you can mount here or at least that's one idea ideally of course this should this board should have been uh, not so sloppy um, but um, to rectify this you could think that you could add a sleeve around here bolt it here and then uh, either reducing the amount of throw you have on the spindle by adding the sleeve on top here or milling down whatever there will be a sort of a sleeve here which connects to the uh, the, the scale but that's mm, really just very very uh, some millimeters so uh, and it's not meant for that purpose either um, you could argue that you're not milling uh, with the spindle when you're milling you should have the spindle probably 
in here. So I'll just try to see if there is any slop at that point also. Which you see there is. And then you can argue you have to lock down the spindle, which is correct, but still you have that uh, amount of play because locking down wouldn't mean that you completely, uh, on all the circuit furious, that you have complete, let's say, a fixture or fixing. And uh, even so, uh, you will have uh, that uncertainty with you, I think. So I will try to measure now on the uh, full length here on the inside on the actual casting to see uh, where I should put this um, uh, let's say alignment to, to the table here. Uh, so the spindle and the column will ideally should be totally of course uh, in line. Uh, but if the locking mechanism, if, if we don't do anything here and the locking mechanism then throws this off by uh, some hundreds, then I don't know if uh, we should then keep it that way. But I, I think so. Uh, so my idea is, I'm, I'm really thinking as I go now what to do. I, at the point here, I think we'll have to uh, take the column to spindle um alignment as good as possible to the bore that should be it uh, meaning that you could try to alter that by uh, scraping if this was linear or is linear um, either by uh, scraping here or here and here i mean on both sides of the castings here and i find that the if this now is flat to and then in alignment with the dovetails, um, which it seems to be uh, after the owner having scraped it, uh, this is a little bit out of alignment, but I think it was some two, three hundreds, let's say three hundreds, uh, high or low like this. And also, a little bit uh, like this uh, but anyway I bolted it down so that now sits so it can't move so whatever area you have here is there and then to the table I just wanted to measure to the spindle finding this that's okay I can live with that or we can live with that or we can correct it but then I find that the uh, the bore is quite sloppy so when extended, I can move the spindle 20 hundreds minimum. I can it's probably even more, which is not good. Uh, meaning that, uh, of course, uh, this will represent or will present itself in a in a out of uh, uh, round bore. If you think about that, not precisely line. It can follow. Uh, well, you're not guaranteed a good result. When milling, of course, uh, you wouldn't mill with the with the quill extended like this anyway. But this would be, I guess, unacceptable because it would chatter and, uh, yeah, it, it's it's no good. So you're milling with the spindle in here, of course, and then of course also locked down, uh, which then I guess is not the biggest problem if you lock it down. But how do you lock it down? Is it just with the with the with the uh, screw on the side here, which uh, runs in this uh, slot? And you have one point. Then you will, if you view the spindle like this, you would press the spindle in towards one side of the bore, which is sloppy, and then. To the side, okay, uh, if it was down there or if it moves up and down, what alignment, oh, where does it meet? I mean, it would then be only be precise within alignment, let's say, I think it was uh, four or five hundreds here, 
So you will have that uncertainty anyway. My thinking about this is that you could improve this uh, design or um, let's say a little bit uh, sloppy bore by um, having a color here so that you uh, there, there is room to, to mount this color here. So either you move a little bit out here with the color, that is precise of course, you can locate that. Uh, I think you can you can find out where what is absolutely zero or true. And then use this. This will of course then uh, take away this, uh, this much uh, throw. So you could also then mill off this, I guess, flat and then probably either have a thicker or just have a, the same here and you can actually also locate it a little bit inside here if you wanted to um, at least then you would have a, a, a fixed point here dead center that you could use and then of course locking it down will I guess uh, fix this it's it's not I don't, don't think it's a biggest problem if you uh, think a bit Think of it as if you mill, you will use the, the spindle in here anyway, and you will lock it down so it's permanently fixed. But uh, if you try to mill out here or if you bore, well, you have that kind of slop to live with. It's a little bit rescued also by the, by this. Uh, there is a color here that uh, mounts to this uh, uh, dial. You know, it's not meant to be used as a as an alignment fixture, and then of course you have the um, uh, this uh, thing that connects to the motor. Um, this will also help, but in any case, a little bit sloppy board. So now I measured outside here on the spindle, and I also removed the spindle altogether and measure with um, inside the bore with. Um, test indicator like this and I'm going a little bit in because I, I'm meeting this hole that is machined for the um, rack feed new indicator set up uh, sorry for the glare going into the hole finding the lowest spot so just a hundreds off So there, there we are, and then going in the hole, we can go all the way down to where I see it, uh, where you can see it at least, there, and then up, and down again, you see, I'm already like uh, 500 off, so that means that, um, the column, no, the the head is tilting a bit. Uh, let's see if I have a very. This is a four shim here. If I put the four shim underneath the column, we see. Now I put uh, 400 so a millimeter uh, pair of shims. You can see them down there in the front here. Okay, move on in again. I guess it's hard for you to see, but It shifted about two hundredths of a millimeter. Shim, of course, representing the uh, inverse of what you have to scrape on the, in this case, the um, the top side or the other side of the where you put the shim. And of course, then taking into account whatever area you have on the swing plate here or the swivel plate here. So, um, if the dovetails match up with what we have on the underside here then I would rather take it on the swing plate I think it's better in addition uh, to the fact that you can make this bridge piece here and uh, secure you have a dead center you maybe you can make this 
like we have planned to make this, namely with um, the bore being a little bit offset, not in center, but a little bit offset, just uh, very uh, much um, exaggerated. But this means you can rotate the piece here around and then force the spindle in with whatever direction you want. And then of course make locating pins or, or screws. Maybe fixate it where you find it's the center and then bore, out, bore in here. I was namely asked to, to bore out this hole so that uh, the, uh, this um, pinion, rack pinion, the gear shaft here, could be uh, moved up and down to get a more snug and precise fit. So there he will make an elongated hole or no, off center hole so that he could turn this this uh, on a bigger scale then around and then move the this pinion up and down. And this of course will help to secure a precise uh, at least locate the spindle without uh, that much play. So open up that hole to 50 millimeters so that we can make a boss here that you could use to off center and then force the pinion up. So if you picture yourself this where the pinion rides in the uh, on the rack here, this fit was kind of sloppy. And then uh, the owner wants me to bore this hole bigger so that he can move this up. Because then if you bore out and then you can fit the sleeve, instead of having that precise or this fit there, you can fit the sleeve that is a little bit off center board, and thereby rotate it and, you know, tighten it. But whether or not this will be directly I guess then up then, so that means that you will locate the spindle to this, and at this point then fixate it to whatever furthest point you have here, what that would mean, not sure, but anyway, it's very sloppy as it is now, this uh, quill, uh, no, this, um, yeah, the quill with the rack and the, the pinion here fit, but this will be much improved by this.